If you read The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin, you can be struck by the fact that he confesses in three places that he just cannot explain altruistic behavior in animals. He talks about the social insects, he talks about cooperation between animals, and he flatly says, I really can't make any sense of this, because if behavior is inherited and is subject to natural selection, that behavior should favor the individual and should not favor someone else. So Darwin says, says as he did famously, because he was very honest about what he didn't understand, don't get it. Well, what happens, of course, in the, the middle of the 20th century is R.D. Hamilton, Robert Trivers, and others come along with a theory called kin selection. And that kin selection says that if you have an instinctive motivation towards altruistic behavior, altruistic means I help you at my own expense. I have a behavior that is a detriment to me but helps you. Um, what they explain very clearly is if there's an instinctive motivation for such behavior, a gene for it, to put it crudely, that gene can succeed, even though it's to the detriment of my survival, if that behavior is directed towards close relatives, towards offspring or kin. That's why it's called kin selection, because it helps to, it, it tends to favor individuals who might carry a copy of the same gene. It makes the group more successful. But the difficulty, as was brought up, is that humans in particular, and many other primates, display altruistic behavior to a much larger circle. And this is what I meant when I said I'm not sure that evolution explains everything about human nature, because this cooperativity is, is really there. Now, David has brought up the idea of evolution of social groups and evolution of culture, and there is no one human nature because there are many cultures on this planet. Um, I tend to use a, a narrower definition of evolution as evolution in the biological sense. And to me, the notion of cultural evolution or the evolution of music or the evolution of political systems is more of a metaphor that uses the word evolution as opposed to evolution in the biological sense. So I think biological evolution gives us the tool, produces the brain, produces the instinctive behaviors, but we go further than that. We invent mathematics, we compose music, we write poetry. All of these things happen on the basis of the, ev of the toolkit that evolution gave us, but I think they transcend the evolutionary, the purely evolutionary explanation of human nature. Okay, I feel okay. like I have to let you yeah. respond yeah. Sure. to there, that. There are a couple uh, of points here. This is science, right? Yeah. Scientists disagree, right? So sure. this is uh, so very good that, uh, and I would beg to differ with you with respect to just the history. And uh, I think that Darwin actually perceived very clearly how altruism evolves um, on the strength of groups of altruists doing better than groups of non-altruists. But I really, at this point, want to segue to culture and focus not on Darwin, but on a forgotten figure among most people, and that is uh, Pierre Thiel de Chardin, the French paleontologist who was also a Catholic Jesuit priest and who wrote the book Phenomenon of Man, which I'm sure you've read, mm -hmm. um, in addition to other books. And I had the uh, opportunity to read that book closely very recently and was actually astonished at how current it is because it's not read by my colleagues at all. It's read mostly for its spiritual value. Anyone who reads it now reads it primarily for its spiritual value. But I was amazed at how current it was scientifically. And what Chardin did, I think, was absolutely extraordinary because that book and his vision is 100% naturalistic. He does not invoke intervention anywhere, not for the origin of life, not for the origin of humans, not for anything. And yet, that book is just penetrated with spirituality and he's using the word spirit and soul all the time. And the reason that he can do that is he says that what was, what was amazing about human evolution was that it was the birth of a new evolutionary process. And that for him made human origins as significant as the origin of life because the last time an evolutionary process had been created, it was the origin of life. Now we have some new process that had taken place, a variation and selection process. What is evolution but variation and selection? And so this was now a variation of selection of ideas or reflection, as he put it, but which is different in some respects, but in every other respect, obeys the rules of evolution. And so Chardin, and I think this is really the way to go, so this would be a great debate we could have here and we can continue, is that cultural evolution is fundamentally like biological evolution, and we can get so much mileage out of that rather than thinking of it as merely a metaphor. And so uh, I think that what we've identified here is a real debate point <laughs> amongst the experts, right? Mm -hmm. So this is it, folks. State-of-the-art science taking place right in front of you. <laughs> no, no argument that cultural evolution is real. But my argument is, is that human nature is fundamentally biological and affected by the cultures in which we grow up. And 
for me, the, the notion of evolution explaining human nature is in fact that biological evolution. Culture, culture is transient. Um, you can adopt a child from one culture, raise him in another, he's in that other culture. And I think for me as a biologist, the interesting question is how much of our biology explains that human nature? And the, an the answer is a great deal, but not 100%.